So today I'm going to talk about um, mutations in leucine rich repeat kinase 2, which is the theme of the conference here, um, also called LARC2 or LERC2 um, by different people. We got interested in this a few years ago when mutations in the LERC2 gene were found that were associated with, with inherited Parkinson's disease. And in this slide, the, f the first slide here, w what I'm showing is an ideogram of the protein at the bottom. And above that, the variants that have been found in, in humans over the last few years. At the top are a series of mutations that really are very clearly associated with inherited Parkinson's disease, and these are all dominantly inherited. Some of the data I'll show you in, in a minute will be particularly around one of those mutations, G219S. As well as the ones that show fairly clear inheritance, there are some risk factors that show association, which is the third bar down there. And the one I've highlighted, G2385R, is a, a risk factor that about doubles your lifetime risk of Parkinson's disease, particularly in Asian populations. So the question really we're going to address today is how do we assess what these mutations do? And in particular, in, in the work that we've published uh, in cell models. We've tried a lot of things over the years, but in the next slide, I'll show you that um, this is actually work from Masa Believich in Columbia in New York. One of the assays we've ended up using is that neurons that express these dominant forms of, of LOC2 end up with shorter neurites. So um, there's a citation on the graph on the right. Uh, you can see that if you knock out LOC2 using short hairpin RNAs here, the neurites are longer. And if you overexpress, particularly those mutant forms that I showed you in the first slide, they have shorter neurites. And here the measure is the total neurite length for all neurites. There's a number of ways, a number of actual model systems that we can use to model this. The first slide here actually is not neurons, but neuroblastoma cell lines. Uh, these are uh, differentiated SY5Y cells that we can differentiate in culture with retinoic acid. And again, you see that effect. So if you look at the micrographs on the left here, their normal wild-type version of LERC2, uh, you can see that those cells have, have differentiated and supported neurite outgrowth. With the example in the center there with G219S, those neurites are reduced in complexity and so much shorter. And then with a series of other variants that I'll talk about in a second, including a deletion variant, the neurite length is restored. And we can quantify this, and it, it's, it's a relatively robust phenotype. Um, so on the graph on the right, we have, again, the wild type. And the, this is average neurite length, so about 150 microns long with the wild type protein. Again, that's reduced with G219S by about 50%. And then a series of other variants that we've looked at, including uh, K906M, which is a kinase artificial kinase dead variant, and also that risk factor, interestingly, in various combinations of those are, are all effectively loss of function mutations. And that's interesting for us because, we, we, first of all, we didn't really expect that. We thought that the risk factor variants would also be functional variants. And in fact, at least in this assay, they turn out not to be and can overcome the effect of G219S. And the exact implication of that is something we're still working on. The other system that we use a lot is primary neurons. This is the one that was used in the Believich paper. So these are primary cortical neurons from the mouse. Uh, we transfect these transiently with calcium phosphate. And in this particular example, what, what I'm going to show you is an interacting protein of LERC2, which is a co-chaperone BAC5. And what we've done here is tr co-transfected um, the gene of interest with red fluorescent protein, and the merge on the right shows you in yellow uh, an individual neuron that's co-transfected with both markers. Um, this is at the top is the control GFP. And then as we click through, what we see below that is that our interacting protein here, which is called BAG5, also mimics that neurite shortening effect. So we see that's the neuron there in the center, it's green and red, it's transfected both with BAG5 and red fluorescent protein, has a much decreased neuritic complexity. And then finally, um, a mutant of the BAC5 interactor that doesn't recruit heat shock proteins, uh, restores again, restores that complexity. So in the last slide, I'll show you the quantitation of those and, and also introduce another variable. So in this particular example, this, so this is an interacting protein that mimics the LOC2 effect. We can do that in cells that either have endogenous LOC2 or are knockouts because we make them from knockout animals. 
And again, we see that opposite effect. So we see more neurites and more complexity in the basal situation, but then that's lost when we overexpress the interactor. And what we think this means at the moment is that BAG5 is genetically at least downstream of LOC2. Over the next couple of years, what we're going to try and do is understand the mechanism of this a little bit. It isn't clear if this happens in vivo. It may be a cell culture phenomena. And clearly, there's quite a lot of work to do to understand some of these processes.